On overdrive today, we drive the very fun manual BMW M2, take a spin on the Ducati Super Sport 950S and find out just how safe the Tata Altros' iCNG technology is to use. Hello and welcome to Overdrive, I am Soinita. The BMW M2 comes in an all-new Avtar and it also packs in a lot of power under its hood. This also gets a manual transmission and that is the one which will put a huge smile on any driving enthusiast's face. Rohit will tell you all about it. You may think that the global bestseller for BMW's M division would be one of the holy grails, the M3 or the M5, or in the current world order, the M version of some BMW crossover. But that's not the case. The bestseller is actually the BMW M2, entry spec M powered sedan. And the reason for that is its excellent price to performance ratio. However, its small size didn't really work that well in India. But it could now change because what we have here is an all new BMW M2. M Division calls it the entry drug and this red pill is a larger car than the older M2 with a wider front and rear track too. Its performance intent is highlighted by the larger air scoops and wider bodywork which don a boxier styling as an ode to the 2002 turbo. While the bodywork might look boxy, it's mated to the curvaceous coupe roofline and the traditional BMW glass house with the Hofmeister kink. Highlighting the German or Munich origins, however, is the kidney grille, which distinguishes itself by employing horizontal slats and tastefully placing that M badge in a corner. Like the 3 Series, the 2 Series and consequently even the M2 have somehow managed to escape the BMW designer's compulsive need of putting large, outrageous grills on all modern Bimmers. Of course, it still doesn't look as elegant as a 3 Series or even the M340i, but under the stubby nose, is a rather special engine. Take a look. Say hello again to the 3 litre twin turbo straight six, which is derived from the BMW M3 or M4's S58 motor and only has a marginally lesser power output of 460 PS and an identical 550 Newton meters of torque. And it doesn't lag too far behind on the 0 to 100 time either. If you get your gear shifts right, it'll go from 0 to 100 in a little over 4 seconds. That's fast. The power comes nice and strong throughout the rev range. It's a composed puppy at city speed and a hooligan beyond 3000 RPM. There is something evocative about 6 cylinders, isn't there? Especially when that engine has M garnish on it. Of course, this one doesn't have those eardrum tearing shrieks and screams, nor does it have overtly loud crackles and pops. But this soundtrack is evocative. But it will also give you big laughs, especially considering that it's not only the accelerator pedal that you have at your disposal to control this soundtrack, but you also have a clutch pedal and a stick shift. You heard that right. There's still a manual on offer on the new M2. The clutch isn't for the weak-hearted though, but comes with an auto blipper. And should you accidentally stall the car while driving in the city, quickly depressing the clutch pedal will bring the engine back to life. And once you get a hang of the manual on a 450 horsepower machine, oh, it's pure bliss. The automatic will be the popular choice, of course. It's certainly more convenient and claims quicker acceleration times too, but the charm of a manual, it's hard to say no to. The other beautiful thing is, you can make up to three more people listen to this soundtrack from this very cabin. Of course, the rear seat is ideally suited for kids or teenagers. And though there are Isofix child seat mounts, good luck trying to fit a child seat in there. The infotainment, like most new BMWs, features a driver-centric curved display incorporating two large screens 
and the new iDrive 8 operating system. This M car can go touring too. The 390 litre boot is decent and the front seats are comfortable even for long distances. And the rear seats, not too bad. 100 km drives shouldn't be a problem. The ride quality certainly has a firm edge over the 3 series but is exceptionally good for an M car, almost comparable to the M340i. And while we didn't scrape the underbody even once, you need to be careful over poor roads, especially with those lightweight M wheels. Unfortunately for the M2, its biggest competition is going to come from its own stables. People who are looking at a heady mix of practicality and performance are going to find the M340i to be a viable alternative to the M2. And similarly, people who are looking for a sportier form or some kind of theatrics, some kind of exclusivity, are also going to look at the Z4. But honestly speaking, compared to both these cars, I think the M2 is just at a different level. It may sit in a similar price band, but in terms of the performance, in terms of the handling that it offers, it just sits at a different level. It is a true blue M car. Well, as you can see, it's so much fun still driving a sports coupe, but with a manual transmission. It definitely puts a smile on anyone's face. In fact, the M2 variant that we drove in this particular review is probably the thoroughbred purest form of mechanical sports coupe you can buy in the country today. We'll take a very short break here on the show, but coming up on the other side, we'll take you through a review of the Ducati Super Sport 950S. Welcome back, you're watching Overdrive. Now, Ducati claim the Super Sport 950 is the most user-friendly, fully-fed motorcycle they have ever built. In fact, they also say you can ride this motorcycle without any fuss all day on the roads. Now, is there any truth to this claim? Let's find out. Hey guys, so we're out here today to test out the 2023 Ducati Super Sport 950S. Now, this is a motorcycle that the company claims is its most user-friendly, fully-fed sports motorcycle that it has in its arsenal to date. In fact, that they say that you can ride this motorcycle on a daily basis without any fuss. So, if you wanted a motorcycle from the Ducati stable that was a little sportier, say, than the Monster series of bikes, but not as aggressive as the Panigale series of motorcycles, well, the Super Sport series is the one that you should be looking at. Now, is there any truth to that claim? Well, there's one way to find out. The Super Sport S has all the typical Ducati flair that you would expect. It's got those neat design cues that pay homage to the Panigale V4, like that sharp face with those stern looking LEDs and the neat looking little winglets. The fairing on the 2023 model covers most of the mechanicals and while it may not be as much of a visual delight as the bigger sportier Panigale series, it is supposed to help disperse heat better than before while keeping things nice and tidy on the visual front. And it does just that. It's one of those Ducati bikes that wouldn't be complete without the exposed trellis frame and that ever so sumptuous single-sided swing arm. Looks very nice and compact in profile. In the flesh, one might even mistake this motorcycle for a smaller capacity bike. In terms of its features, the Supersport S gets a thicker, fully adjustable Olin's fork up front and a monoshock at the rear over the standard models Mazoshi and Sax units. In true Ducati fashion, it comes packed with a 6-axis IMU which detects the roll, yaw and pitch angles of the bike. The Super Sport S gets a full TFT color display, which is nice. But then again, it doesn't get Ducati's multimedia system or Bluetooth connectivity. So if that's your thing, you'll have to shell out for that separately. Two of the best features of this bike have to be its slipper clutch and the bi-directional quick shifter. Both these bits feel fantastic to employ on a daily basis, not only on open highways, but the former also makes life a lot easier in city traffic. Alright, so not only does the 950 Super Sport look like a real gem out on the road, but it really has the go to show as well. 
Now powering this motorcycle is Ducati's 937cc L twin Testa Stetter motor. Well, it's the same engine that powers the Ducati Monster, the Hyper Motard, and the 950 Multi Strada. Now the engine puts down a maximum power of around 110 PS, and you have three modes to fiddle around with, uh, different engine map settings as well. In sport, well, that's the most fun mode you'd really want to be in because, well, this motor just loves to be there. From 3000 all the way up to 9000 is just so smooth, linear. This bike just pulls so cleanly. It feels like a thorough, thorough Ducati all throughout. It really feels like you could ride this bike all day. Except for maybe if you're in Mumbai and it's the peak of summer because these kind of riding conditions don't really favor any sort of Italian sports motorcycle. This one too tends to heat up quite a bit. And if you're stuck in a jam, you'll want to pull over and stop to give her a breather if you don't fancy your thighs getting cold. But as soon as you're back up and running, you'll see the engine temperature readout on the dash drop quite fast, which I must admit was mildly reassuring. It won't be long before you're holding onto gears while creating some lovely tunes from those sweet cut shot twin pipes. The best part about this bike and the way it's set up is that you don't really have to ride fast to feel comfortable. The ergonomics will have you hunched forward with some weight on your palms, but it's surprisingly comfortable. Something that makes the Supersport 950S comfortable and easy to manage out on the road, well, first and foremost is the seat. Now at uh, 8, 10 mm of seat height, as you can see, swingy I like to get over, fairly easily manageable. And for my 5.9 frame, well, getting my feet flat on the ground at both, uh, both sides of the motorcycle, very manageable as well. Shorter riders will find this to be quite convenient for a Ducati motorcycle. And of course, this is the 950S, so it gets adjustable all-in suspension at both ends. And of course, in this stock setting, well, it is on the softer side. Well, taking on corners, braking hard, loading up the front, getting into a corner at speed. Well, it does feel a little twitchy at times. And if you wanted it more sport focused, you will definitely want to dial in uh, some stiffness at either end of this motorcycle. Now, traditionally, Ducatis are not bikes that are meant to dish out large dollops of comfort. But this one surprisingly does that. Ducati sports bikes are meant to be fast, fun and exciting. Not only to ride but to look at as well. And the Super Sport S definitely ticks off all those three boxes. Now if you have the right tools and the skill set to match, you can definitely sharpen and raise the bar of potential on this one. In every sense, the Super Sport S gives you the feeling that you are riding a proper Ducati sports bike. It isn't vibe free, but still, it gives you that solid feeling whenever you lay your hands on its bars. It roars to life every time you fire it up, and that is a little spectacle in itself. You can feel the engine working its magic between your legs when you ring the throttle. And that lovely tubular chassis, the way it holds it all together, is just brilliant. Like the older Ducatis, it has a nice, slightly raw, powerful feel to it, which is awesome. But it blends that with the tech well, giving you a good margin of safety in tricky situations. It feels special, this one. It is a very fun and enjoyable motorcycle, very comfortable once again. And uh, given its price tag, it certainly feels like a thoroughbred Ducati through and through. Well, I'm hoping our review has been able to tell you whether you should put your money on this motorcycle or not. We'll be back after a very short break to tell you all about the Tata Altros ICNG. Stay with us, you're watching Overdrive. Welcome back, you're with us on Overdrive. Now, just recently, Tata Motors launched the CNG variant of the Altros, which is priced between 7.55 to 10.55 lakh rupees. Now, we are here to tell you just how this technology works and how safe it is and whether that boot space is enough as a hatchback. If you are in the market for a CNG powered vehicle, you now have more choice than ever before. But that big deterrent, that compromise that you've had to make in terms of practicality to get those added savings, that hasn't changed. Tata Motors has tried to address this now with its newest offering, the Tata Altros iCNG. The Tata Altros iCNG looks identical to the other Altros versions, so you have the same sophistication to the way it looks with its quite intricate design touches. The only way to tell the CNG version apart is through the small iCNG badge on the boot lid. But the big draw with the Altros iCNG is that you still get 
a usable amount of boot space. So there's 210 liters. Yeah, it's a bit less than the 330 liters that you get in a petrol or diesel Altros, but there's enough here, say for a weekend's worth of luggage for the family. Yeah, the floor isn't entirely flat, but a lot of work has gone into making this happen, as you will see. It's what Tata Motors calls the twin cylinder technology. So it's effectively two 30 liter CNG tanks placed side by side. And yeah, a lot of other things that have happened to sort of make this work. There's a six point mounting harness to keep this sort of tank arrangement in place. There's a manual shut off valve. So example, if there's a leak or a fire, you can just manually shut it off the flow of the gas. And you even have better protection, body protection at the rear of the car. So for example, if there's a rear impact so that, you know, there isn't a leak or the tanks don't enter the passenger compartment, thought has gone into sort of strengthening the car in that respect. Also, you still get a spare wheel. You access it like how you do in SUVs through that nut and it sort of falls down from here. So pretty much most things that you would want in a car have somehow still been taken care of with the Altros IC engine. The big talking point though is that unlike rivals, the Altros' CNG option can be had right up to the top variants. So you get features like climate control, auto headlamps and wipers, 8 speaker sound system and connected tech. Now in terms of what's changed on the inside of the Tata Altros, and this holds true for all Altros models, you now get a sunroof which has voice commands, you get a wireless charger and you get an air purifier. Sadly, cruise control is now no longer available, but you do get a button to lock and unlock the doors, which was a big problem with the earlier one, it didn't have a button. But specifically for the CNG version, you now get the simpler sort of digital readout from the Tiago and Tigo. You don't get the richer screen that was there taken from the Safari in the regular Altros models. So yeah, it does give you the CNG gauge and the fuel gauge, which is a good thing. Other CNG focused safety features are a micro switch that keeps the car switched off while refueling and a system that cuts off CNG supply to the engine and releases it into the atmosphere in case of a fire. The lack of ESC in the top variants is a miss, but you get two airbags, ABS and brake sway control. Now the Altros ICNG can start in CNG power itself, which is a good thing to have. And on this fuel, it makes about 73.5 PS and 103 Newton meters. And then when you switch to petrol, that goes up to 88 and 115. And yeah, this difference is quite noticeable. And mostly it's noticeable, say, when you're at lower speeds, where you notice that this engine, it didn't always have a great deal of low-end performance, and that is sort of slightly enhanced, but it in no way sort of hampers your regular everyday progress. Yes, you will have to so sort of shift gears more often than not to keep the car running in its power band, especially since the CNG tanks and all the additions that have come with it have added about 80 or 100 kgs to the overall curb weight of the Altros. So that is about the biggest difference in terms of how this car feels. And then, of course, when you switch to petrol power, it's more or less identical to drive. Yes, you don't get the drive modes anymore, which is a bit sad. But other than that, it drives pretty much more or less the same. Tata Motors says it has improved low end torque with this new update, which is more noticeable in the petrol mode. The lower outputs in the CNG mode somewhat dilute this effect. But the Altros iCNG can start in CNG mode and the switch between the two fuels is quite quick and seamless. We also managed a quick mileage test with the Altros iCNG, which returned over 18 kilometers per kilogram. But we'll wait for the full road test to pass our final judgment on the Altros iCNG's efficiency. Now Tata Motors says they've also retuned the suspension for the added weight that has come in with this ICNG version. For example, the suspension has been made slightly firmer. So what you do notice is that the Altros' ride, which was so composed and stable over, say, a smooth surface like this, that has remained. It feels very well planted at, at these times. But when you come up to, say, a rough patch of road or a sharp speed breaker, you do notice that there is a loud thud. The suspension is a bit stiff. It's not very uncomfortable, it still rounds off these bumps very well for a small hatchback. But yes, it rides slightly firmer than what the regular Altros does. But again, it's not something that will put you off buying the Altros iCNG. The engine is quiet when you start up in CNG and at least at city speeds, 
there is little in the way of noise and vibrations filtering into the cabin, which make for a fairly calm driving experience. Tata Motors says 40% of the Tiago and Tigor sales are from CNG models, and the Altros i CNG should only take this forward. With its many variant options and long features lists, as well as the usable boot space, there are now fewer compromises than ever when you choose the more frugal fuel option. This should appeal to a wide selection of buyers, maybe ones who weren't in the market for a CNG car even. The price, which is between Rs 7.55 lakh to Rs 10.55 lakh, also adds to this sense. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this week's edition of Overdrive. But remember, you can stay in touch with the team through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and you can follow our latest updates on Instagram. We'll see you next week. Until then, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.